Story number two then, and uh, earlier this week, we had a, a fairly big initiative launched by the government, and it's called the Breathe In Space Initiative. And I think it's a positive step. It's effectively for people who get into financial difficulties, particularly with their debts, whilst they're working with a registered debt advisor, they get Breathe In Space from the um, creditor. So they can't um, add penalties, they can't add interest to the loans, they can't contact them for that. I think it's a six month period they're allowed to have, sorry, 60 day period they're allowed to have breathing space for. Um, and the one figure in there that really surprised me was the Treasury thinks that 700,000 people are going to benefit from that initiative in the first 12 months of the scheme. And that's a lot of people who otherwise would have been trying to figure out how to resolve their debt problems whilst being hounded by the lender and the people they owed money to. So um, you, you picked up some research, Hannah, which was about around, I, I guess, some of the anxiety that people have about debt worries. Um, over f- three quarters of 45 to 54 year olds report debt worries during the pandemic, and 34% having debts they don't know how to pay off. So I think those two sort of that initiative plus that bit of research combined was yeah, quite quite shocking in a way. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like there should be a reasonable number of people who are 45 to 54 making use of this. And I always think it's it, it must be such a horrific situation to be in, to feel like your debts are spiraling out of control and there's just no way to get a handle on things. And so even, uh, you know, I am somebody that is constantly criticising this government, but actually I can only say good things about this. And there's there's more in there that I think is worth almost taking a hat off again to this. So for instance, there's clauses in this about mental health because mental health and and debt are intrinsically linked with Mm. one another. And if somebody is in a mental health crisis, they are now in a position where their counselor, that that might be the wrong term for the person with that job, but they on behalf of the person who's having a mental health crisis can get in touch with this scheme the people that run this scheme to get all this stuff paused so the person that's having a horrific time with their mental health isn't going to have bailiffs knocking on their door and then that extends for a a further 30 days after they're done with whatever mental health crisis Mm. center or whatever it is that they're dealing with so I think it's really good that they've added that in particularly now when you know there's enough evidence to show that people's mental health has taken an absolute beating throughout the pandemic and combined with those people that haven't managed to save money because we've been talking a lot about how something like 90 billion pounds has been saved across households in the UK but actually there's a very real portion of people that have suffered hugely financially as a result and it's very scary as well I think for people of this age because If you're in spiraling debts and you're in your mid 50s, time is not on your side Mm -hmm. in terms of before you want to retire and get your finances in order. So it's it's quite a horrific position to be in. Yeah, I mean, from, from a financial planning perspective, historically, we always thought that age range of 45 plus was almost a golden time to really boost your retirement savings to to really bolster your overall financial position because your career average earnings should be at some of the highest levels. You You should have been in your career for 20 years plus and earning good money. Hopefully by that stage, people were starting families very young. So the children were leaving, going off to university, leaving the home, and you didn't have that added cost burden. So very often people in that 45, 50, 50 plus range were all of a sudden flush with extra money and being able to funnel that towards their pensions and towards their retirement income, repaying the mortgage rapidly, um, you know, getting themselves into a really strong financial position. But you're right, you know, if, if people, that many people, 34% of them have got debts so they don't know how to pay off, they're not going to be thinking about really making massive financial provision for the future. They're all of a sudden going to be thinking, how do I how do I deal with this problem I have right now in front of me? And and for all, all the sort of positive things we can say about the Breathing Space Initiative, I, I was a bit concerned with some of the small print at the end of it. Um, so you have to be able to keep up your bills and payments, yeah, your mortgage or rent and your utility bills and things. If you miss any of those, you effectively get kicked out of the breathing space scheme immediately. And also to note, this is not a sort of payment holiday 
for your debts. It pauses the interest, it pauses the penalty charges, it stops your creditors from hounding you. But you do have to keep paying those debts. And, and people who have got themselves into real financial difficulty for any reason I, I, I almost worry that it's not going to be enough to give them the time they need to get back on their feet and to deal with it like some of the pandemic provisions we saw at the FCA announced around you know debt holidays mortgage holidays etc yeah I, I I completely agree I think that's a really good point actually I think this will work very very well for people who are in although unmanageable debt manageable in terms of dealing with it with a debt advisor mm. but they have a, an income or something like that that they can still be paying for their rent mortgage whatever it is that they have to pay but i think for those that are truly snowed under they probably will need more help than that and i i don't really know how we go about that but just going back to your point about this sort of I think they're called the sandwich generation, aren't they? Sort of mid forties. They are now, yeah, because because we're starting families later, and often we've got elderly parents who haven't done a decent thing and died, but they've kept going and they've become very How poorly dare they? needed needed <laughs> lots of sort of support, either financially or just our time, you know, to look after them. So they are sandwiched between those two age ranges. Mm. Well, they're now, according to this research, anyway, they're now the most that sorry, the least happy and most anxious age group in the UK, which is interesting as well, because obviously as a millennial, I bang on and on about how hard we've got it. And we talk a lot about how young people have been badly affected by the pandemic. And we'll talk more about that in a second, but very little attention actually goes to people of this particular age group. And when I was writing, I wrote a blog for you last week, um, and it was about pensions and sort of how well or poorly different generations are set up for retirement and actually people of this age are, are one of the worst hit and it's because mm -hmm. they're not benefiting from these sort of glorious db schemes that a lot of baby boomers would have benefited from but at the same time they haven't had time to benefit from automatic enrollment so it does almost feel a little bit like to me that you have this generation that's actually really struggling and people aren't talking about it as much as maybe needs to be talked about. I imagine there's huge, I imagine there's a lot of people in this generation to be fair that are, have done really, really well for themselves. They own a home, they're, they're fine. Mm. It's, it's not a massive systemic problem, but I think this is possibly an untold tale that people are just not, the limelight is not being shot on. I'm, I'm getting worried now. So if the millennials are screwed and the sandwich generation is screwed, it's only the boomers who are doing well financially and yeah. not all of them either. So may, maybe this is not as good as we thought it was. Just a couple of extra thoughts from me on this sort of debt breathing space scheme. Um, one is it's obviously going to rely on the availability of debt advisors and debt charity capacity to help people in this, you know, to go through this process. But the other real worry I had, and I, I was Googling breathing space scheme on Monday when the announcement came out. And still we have this really serious problem, which is all of the top Google results are paid ads. And they are not charities. They are not debt charities. And you've come across this before, I know, but they're not debt charities. They are commercial debt organisations and they masquerade as debt charities. So what I would say for anyone watching this or listening to our conversation who does think, OK, this breathing space scheme could help me out of my financial difficulty and go through that process, please, when you're searching for help, make sure you speak to a debt charity. Don't speak to one of these commercial organisations because they will charge massive fees to restructure your debts. They will benefit fit more than you do from it and and i think it's horrific that google still allow them to place adverts and come as top of the search for debt charity results yeah i mean i couldn't agree more i think massive responsibility should be placed on social media to be a bit more sensible about money and this goes back to conversations we've had as well about tiktok and money advice and all the rest of it but but yeah i mean if you are listening to this conversation and you're in debt i just wanted to highlight one last thing so Aviva gave some advice as to how to deal with debt. And some of it is, I mean, it's the classic don't go on holiday and, you know, spend less on your food shop type thing, which I would not be so condescending as to tell you because I'm sure you already know that. But if you are in debt, maybe consider consolidating your debt into one place. That's something I think that people don't often think about because then it makes your, it reduces your monthly payment and interest payments and whatnot. Or, of course, go and talk to a debt advisor following on what you just said, Martin. I, th I believe it's called, and do correct me if I'm wrong, the Debt Advice Service. I think there's a Debt Advice Service in, in the UK. That rings a bell. There, there's there's several, I have to say. Um, I mean, there's, uh, Christians Against Poverty is another really big one. 
Um, but uh, you, they should, they have to explain they are a charity, and that will be put front and centre. If you know mm. registered charity is not in their footer on their website, they're not a charity; they're yeah. a commercial debt organisation. So I think just just really take care when you're searching for them. Is the message here, um, and make sure you don't get sort of suckered into paying extra money out that you don't already have because that's the real risk there. 